Last thing we're going to talk about is specific heat for solids and for liquids. Now, solids keep the same volume. Liquids keep the same volume. And they're usually considered to be incompressible. Like they don't really change. Their density doesn't really change. So because of that, specific, um, the specific volumes of these incompressible substances like water and rocks is constant during a process. For waters, it can change if you get to high enough pressures, but at some point, it's just, you know, we're really doing crazy physics. And for us, we never get to those kind of pressures. Now, because its volume does not change and they're incompressible, our specific heat is the same for at constant volume and at constant pressure. And so we just abbreviate it with just a C right there and say it's our specific heat for iron. We don't mention which one it's for, constant volume, constant pressure, because it's the same when it's for a solid or for a liquid. Now, we know that our enthalpy is equal to our internal energy plus the flow work, R plus RT. Either one works. And we can start relating those together. So I can figure out how my change in enthalpy and my change in internal energy are related. And I can say that, okay, well, they're related to this average specific heat times temperature plus um, what would normally be the flow work. Now, in this case, what you notice is that I don't have a flow work. It's not PDV because that is going to be equal to zero because it doesn't change volume. But I still have this volume term right here. I still have that volume term. And so the volume is staying constant, and I'm just doing it with a change in pressure instead. However, this term is really, really small. Okay, It's typically insignificant compared to temperature. And for most cases, we just completely ignore it. If you go into applied, um, applied thermo or thermodynamics 2, depending on what you're called, you will have many problems where you have to make these cycle diagrams. It looks something like this. And usually, there's a step where something goes through a pump. And you can still get the right answer at the end if you completely ignore the pump and how it does technically increase the energy of your system, but it's very negligible. Now, there's two special cases that you're going to commonly inquire commonly encounter. Number one is a constant pressure process. That's like, like a heater. If that's the case, my change in pressure is always equal to zero in that. And I can figure out my change in enthalpy or my change in internal energy from the average specific heat times my change in temperature. Or if I need to, I can go to a table. The other one is constant temperature processes. Temperature doesn't change. And in that case, yes, my enthalpy would be equal to, so my change in enthalpy would be equal to my volume at that time times my change in pressure. It does have a change in energy, but it's very, very small, so you can often neglect it. Okay, now this is technically true, okay? Technically. However, it's honestly a lot easier to just ignore the pressure component from enthalpy and just say that the enthalpy of an incompressible substance is simply equal to the enthalpy for a fluid at least, for a fluid, is equal to the enthalpy of a saturated liquid at that particular temperature. So if you ever have a compressed liquid, just ignore the compressed liquid tables and find the saturated properties at the particular temperature you're at from the saturated mixture tables, and you'll get a good one. This is great in a pinch, and it works really, really well. And honestly, it's what I do in most problems. So this is it for now. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.